So welcome everyone again to Surf Center's channel. My name is Mark and we're here with uh, Nico Prien, uh, Surf Center's co-owner and also brand manager of Starboard. And today we want to show you the new uh, Starboard windsurf foil board for uh, slalom racing, which is the X15. Uh, it's a completely new design board and it has some drastic changes compared to last year's uh, foil board. So I think we can ask uh, Nico everything about it. Yeah. So Nico, uh, can you maybe uh, first tell me why it's called the X15? Yeah, uh, well, that's the first big drastic change on the board, uh, the new name. And the uh, X15 actually is an homage to Jim Drake, who is uh, the co-inventor of windsurfing and also co-inventor of uh, one of the fastest or still the fastest jet in the world, which is called the X-15. So it's a, yeah, it's a really fast plane, the fastest in the world. And this is probably right now the fastest winter board uh, or foil board in the world. It also flies through the air like the plane. So this is the name, the heritage of the name. Okay, that's cool. So what I would see at the board, like uh, the, the foil boards, the slalom foil boards have quite big cutouts. Can you tell me something mm. more about it? Okay. Maybe it's good yeah, maybe we'll show it, yeah. And, uh, bear with us here because this is my personal racing board so there might be some dirt and damage here and there obviously racing uh, there sometimes happens some incidents so uh, bear with us here but yeah we have uh, so we have those massive cutouts and what those cutouts do is that uh, it accelerates the water uh, along this line so whenever you have a shape kind of like a, you, if you look at it maybe like like this it's sort of a water drop so it's very wide in the in the front and then it becomes slimmer towards the tail something you also see in race boards and race boards obviously have to be fast in non-planing conditions yeah. and um, and that way it really helps you to get speed in when you're not planning yet and therefore uh, it helps with the takeoff to to get the speed to get the foil activated um, another thing is of course that once the board is in the air the whole airflow around the board matters and this actually uh, we learned more and more how much it matters, how the board flies through the air. And actually also the wind accelerates uh, along these lines and it makes it more efficient. Yeah, so if I understand you correctly, we use the complete uh, width of the board for uh, getting on the foil. And then when we're on the foil, we have less, uh, uh, it's more less efficient. Drag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Less drag. Yeah, okay. We have less drag. And then also something we have new is that um, we have a, a tail kick here towards the end. So, um, well, you have a slight curvature while the fin box or the foil box is still level so it doesn't change the rake of your box but um, this tail kick allows you again to activate the foil easier to kick it down easier um, because if you imagine the opposite let's imagine all this is filled out with uh, with with surface with material you, you can't push it down there's so much volume you can't push it down so you try to find ways where you stand stable on the board uh, really have a you also stand wide so you have the leverage on the foil but you sort of reduce the surface and make it glide efficiently through the water and that's what we did here okay cool so if i look over the board i can see some channels walking uh, down the back of the board exactly. that's also a new feature yeah well this is basically that's that's the channel so this 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 rocker line here on the side next to the fin box is what creates uh, sort of this channel and the, the reason why it looks like a channel the reason why we kept this straight is basically to to keep the foil box in the same angle yeah. so had we also made the the rocker here and towards the tail then all of a sudden the the foil would not be straight anymore and would have a lot of rake and then yeah. it doesn't work in the air yeah okay yeah. so that that's clear um, so when we look at the at the nose of the mm -hmm. board, so maybe turn it around. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can show it like this. Yeah, the that's camera. Cool. It looks like there's less scoop in the board. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So it's um, we have a very flat board now, um, especially actually if you help me turning it around, yes. you can see it more from the from the top. So we have a completely flat deck. And um, before we, we used to have a lot of concave in the deck, which helped to create lift. And in fact, we still have it in our foil racing boards. Because when you go upwind and downwind, you want to climb really high. You know it, you're, you race yourself. Yes. And uh, it helps when the nose stays up when you go upwind. Yeah. But in foil slalom, what we want is efficiency, pure efficiency. So we don't need all this lift. And we also realized that we race a lot more in stronger winds now. So you want a board that glides efficiently through the air. 
And um, by making it flat, we have a super efficient uh, profile of the board. Um, and uh, therefore it, it has less scoop. The problem though is when you put less scoop, you're more likely to touch down with the nose yes. and go submarine underwater and do your catapult. <laughs> I think we all know this, but um, what we did to, to counter this, and now we can maybe turn the board around again. Yeah, you can see that we have a lot of V in the nose. Yeah. So it, it really has a lot of, uh, yeah, sort of this uh, diagonal line uh, in, in, to both sides, obviously. And uh, when you touch down, uh, the nose bounces uh, straight back up. So this is what we, how we manage to keep a flat rocker, make it efficient, but not have the worst of the worst touchdowns. Okay, so it's the yeah. best of both worlds. It's uh, the actually. best of yeah. both worlds, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Okay. Made for pure, like going very fast and uh, the exactly. best aerodynamics for the air. Exactly, okay. exactly. Well, and therefore, cool. therefore it also uh, gets a very slim nose. So if you can yeah, see the nose, you can see it. Yeah. Um, because we have the flat deck, but we still have some scoop in the bottom. So that make, actually that makes it get slimmer towards the nose. Okay, yeah. so the, the nose is a little more narrow than last year. Exactly, the nose. Yeah. If we if we look at the well the outline, you can see that. Um, bring it over here. You can see that the, the nose is definitely a bit more narrow. Again, makes it more efficient. It's a sort of a balance between how much lift the board gets and how efficient it becomes. If you go even more narrow, more narrow, more narrow, the board becomes sort of instable. So the width gives you also stability and lift and so you have to find a balance and this is the balance we found you also see um, that we are really wide in the tail yes um, you sort of have to find a comfortable stance and we still find that the more wide tail yeah gives us a uh, makes it uh, just comfortable between the the both legs how, how you stretch them you can put a lot of leverage and you can change quite early to the smaller boards because we have new sizes um, Previously, we were on 71, 81, 91. So now we can use uh, three foil boards in the PWA Tour, and we have the 91, 85, and 78. So we don't really need to go smaller than 78. And those sizes, they work, uh, they work really well for us. And also in the PWA Tour, uh, we can only register one board bigger than uh, 85 centimeters yes. so we said okay let's go with the biggest possible on uh, close as possible to 85 and because of the width you can actually switch really fast to the 85 and what we um, t team riders found because we actually been we have been using this board in competitions this year already we switch almost immediately to the 85 so as soon as there's 10 knots we're on the 85 okay because yeah. it's, it's very wide you have a lot of leverage on the foil narrow makes it more efficient and uh, i think the 85 will be for most of you guys will be the most interesting size yeah on this yeah. board so last year i heard you say that you were most on the 91 when, uh, exactly. when doing slalom foiling races but now we can go uh, earlier to the 85 exactly yeah. yeah okay so that that will also make it a lot faster right exactly that, yeah. that makes actually uh, in, in terms of speed for us between uh, the 91 and 85 we see a difference of probably a knot which, which one is, not as massive. Is massive, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Okay, that's cool. Um, maybe so we also see that the mass track is still slightly reduced, re recessed. Yeah, exactly. Um, that has been changed or not? Like last year, there was also a small uh, yeah, recessed mass track. Yeah, it was already recessed and because of the concave in the nose, it was already a bit uh, lower in general. But um, yeah, the recessed deck ha helps a lot with control. So that's yeah. just really it. Um, maybe about the, the profi profile when we talk about the, uh, the, the concave on the deck. If you look from the side, actually, maybe if you lift it a bit yes. so we can show how, yeah, exactly. So I talked about the slim nose, right? And it becomes thicker towards here, towards the, the center of the board. That's why you need the recessed mass deck to, to keep the pressure point low. Here's probably around here is the thickest point of the board and then it becomes slightly slimmer again. And uh, this is all because we want to maximize the efficiency. How does the wind, the wind usually comes at 45 degrees. If you combine the extra wind with, your, with the, the wind you're getting from, from uh, the speed. apparent wind, from yeah. your speed, exactly. So how does the wind flow around the board and make the board more efficient? How do we get the least drag? So the wind comes and you can see 
uh, you can look at it as sort of like a fin, how the water goes around the fin. And you kind of have to find the sweet spot, where is the thickest point of the board, and then it has to become slimmer again uh, for, for um, less drag. So what's important is that when the wind releases, that it releases clean and you don't have turbulences behind the board. And so you can see also towards the tail, it becomes really slim and it becomes much, uh, much smoother here. And so therefore, again, uh, makes it more stable in the air and more efficient. So I can see why it's uh, named like an airplane right now. Exactly. It's, it uh, works it's, like an airplane. It works yeah. like an airplane. So that's really a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything more to say about this board? Well, overall, I can just say uh, it, it's nice because we raced on this already this year and uh, we get the real world experience and we're all super, super stoked with it. So we're really happy. My personal favorite is also the 85 because yes. it's such a good overall board, super easy co to control. Um, you have the, f the soft foot straps, of course. And uh, yeah, uh, well, I just like the look as well. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, I, I agree. So um, maybe if there are any more questions uh, for you guys, please uh, leave them in the comments or send them via WhatsApp. We have a lot of gear gurus here who can help you with your, uh, your questions about foil boards or whatever we have, we've, we have in the shop. Um, and then I would like to thank you for explaining us about this new board. You're and welcome. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you in the shop. Bye-bye.